right, let's start the setup here for Minecraft modding in Fabric for Minecraft 120.x. Minecraft modding courses with close to 100 topics ranging from custom tools and armor to custom block entities all the way to custom mobs linked in the description below. And the X here stands of course for any possible number. Currently we are on 1.20.1. You will find in the description a compatibility section where I will basically lay out whether or not this tutorial will be compatible with any future versions. So do keep that in mind. And when you start modding, what are you going to need? You're first of all going to need a JDK or Java development kit. This allows us to actually create Java programs. And in this case, we're going to use Adoptium over here. All of the links referenced in this tutorial are of course going to be in the description below. And in this case, we're just going to download here the JDK over here. I'm going to download this for Windows. I'm going to download the MSI. And once this is downloaded, you can click on this and you can install it onto your PC like any other program. We're going to make sure that add to path as well as set Java home variable over here are set to will be installed on the local hard drive. That's just going to make our lives a little bit easier. And once you make sure of that, you can hit next and install. Once you've installed the JDK, we now need something that's akin to a fancy text editor for making programs. And that's going to be IntelliJ IDEA. Now, it's very important. I want you to pay close attention over here. When you're going onto the JetBrains site that I will link in the description below, you have to scroll down a little bit to find the free version. This is the paid version over here, the ultimate one. That is definitely not needed. You want the free version down here, IntelliJ IDEA Community Edition. You want to just click the download button over here and you'll see it's a community version because it's called Ideal C. So that stands for community. And once again, you just want to install this onto your PC like any other program. We're going to continue with IntelliJ for a moment, but first, the other thing you need is some Java knowledge. So this is one of the things that if you really want to create mods, I cannot recommend enough to get a basic foundation of Java first before you just dive into making a mod. I can understand that you might be really excited, but if you have never programmed before, this is going to be very, very difficult. If you have no programming knowledge at all, I cannot recommend enough trying to, for example, take a look at my Java introduction here for Minecraft modding. It is a bit older, but it should still suffice for you to get at least a good foundation. You can, of course, use any other type of a resource or tutorial series on YouTube for for learning Java, but I just cannot recommend enough. If you really want to make a mod, you will need Java knowledge. And now you can finally download Fabric. Now here we're going to use the Fabric MC Net development template. I want you to not download this immediately because there's a couple of things that we need to do here. And those are the mod name. So the mod name we're going to change to tutorial mod. There we go. And then I want to use a custom ID. I choose to call this tutorial mod. We're going to talk about the mod ID in just a moment. But then the package name over here, you can see it basically suggests you want to do name.modid. Now I'm going to do net.coutmjo dot tutorial mod. What you're going to do is you could do net dot your name. So for example, maybe your name is John. You will then say net dot John dot tutorial mod. And in this case, I want to choose 1.20.1. If you're watching this in the future, which is very likely, then this might already say 1.20.3 or something like that. You can download this as well in the newer version and that's going to be fine. And now here's the extremely important thing. I want you to pay close attention over here and that is the advanced options. Please, check the data generation and uncheck split and common sources. If you don't do this, you are going to run into issues following this tutorial series. Make sure that data generation is ticked and split client and common sources is unticked. If you don't do this, you are going to have issues following this tutorial series. Once you made sure that this is the case, you can hit the download template button. This is going to download a zip file and we can proceed. Now you can see I have this zip file right here in a folder already prepared. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this into the same folder while with right click, I'm going to extract it and I'm going to call this the fabric-tutorial-1.20.x. And we're going to extract over here. And there we go. The zip file can now be deleted and we can go into the folder. Inside of the folder, we can delete the license as well as the .github folder. So those two can be deleted. And then we want to copy the path over here to that particular folder. So just this one, control C to copy. And then we can open IntelliJ for the first time. When you open IntelliJ for the first time, it's going to look similar to this, probably a little bit different because I have about a thousand projects over here. But what you will have is you will have a new project button, an open button, and a get from VCS button. And you want to choose the open button. Once you click the open button, you then want to put in the just copied over path in here. And you can see there's our folder fabric-tutorial-120x. And we want to choose this one, hit OK. We're going to click trust project and a new window will open and things will start happening. So here at the bottom in this build, if we expand this, you can see it starts downloading. It starts basically generating things. It starts to set up our project. These things are needed for Fabric and Minecraft to work here in our environment. And we're just going to let this run through. We're going to be patient. This sometimes takes, you know, a couple of minutes. I've seen it take a little bit longer, but 
you just stay patient, let this run through. It depends on your internet connection and how fast your PC is. And there we go. While I was talking, actually build successful in 33 seconds. The reason it's so fast for me is I've already downloaded this. Now, if you get a build successful, that is exactly what you want to see. Any type of warnings right here, like this cannot resolve resource filtering for match copy action, that is a IntelliJ idea warning. You can ignore this. It's fine. Similar with any other warnings that might come up. As long as you get a build successful here, you should be fine. A few things that you can double check is you can go to file project structure and making sure that the SDK is set to 17 and the language level is also set to 17. Another thing you can do is you can go to file settings. You can go to build execution deployment, build tools under Gradle. Make sure that the Gradle JVM, if it says Java home, the version here is 17. You're totally fine. If it doesn't say 17, you can change this to project SDK 17. The most important thing here is the 17 though. We're going to hit apply. Okay. And then we're good. Okay. We can now minimize the build window and we take a look at the left over here on the project window. So we can expand this Java over here and you can see we have net Draw tutorial mod as well as net Draw tutorial mod mixing. Now this is the first thing that we're going to fix. And what I mean by fixing is that this is all in one line. I actually don't want this to be represented like this. We want to go to this gear over here tree appearance. We want to make sure that both flattened packages as well as compact middle packages is turned off. This is just the personal way that I use. I set this up. I set this up and I want this to look exactly the way that it looks for you. And I basically want this to look exactly the same way for you as it does for me. Next point of order is we want to go into the example mod class over here. So we're going to double click on this and you can see we are now in the example mod class. So this doesn't have too much in it, but the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to delete all of those comments because they are not needed. And we're going to make an addition. The addition is going to be a public static final string. And we're going to call this mod underscore ID all uppercase. And this is going to be a new string. And we're going to call this tutorial mod. The reason why we want to do this is because the mod ID is going to be referenced all throughout our mod like numerous times. And you can even see it here. We can immediately replace this with mod ID. So you can see now instead of putting in tutorial mod everywhere, we can just reference this variable and that's going to be the same thing basically. Now explaining a little bit more for the mod ID, your mod ID is your unique identifier for your mod. So you have to make sure that it's long enough so that it's unique. So something like TM would probably not be a good idea, not a good choice. You will also notice that this mod ID is all written in lowercase because uppercase characters are not allowed in your mod ID. Spaces are also not allowed. You can only have lowercase characters. You can have a underscore and numbers from one through nine. So please make sure that this is the case. If your mod ID does not follow those rules, your mod will not work. We're going to revisit and reuse the mod ID in just a moment. But first of all, we want to change the name of the class. To do this, we want to click on this, right? Example mode over here. Click on this and press Shift F6. It gets highlighted a little bit here. And we want to change this to tutorial mod. Even though tutorial mod and tutorial mod are the same word, quote unquote, right? This one has an uppercase T and an uppercase M. The reason is that because this is the class name, well, this is our mod ID. While they share the same name, there are two different things and they should not have the same casing. Similar in the example mod data generator, I'm going to double click here. And once again, I'm going to click on this, press shift F6, and I'm going to change this to tutorial mod data generator. There you go. We can close this class and we can now proceed on to the resources folder. So we're going to open this up and open this up as well. There's an icon in here, which we can actually delete. We don't need this in this case. And we're going to worry about the assets over here in the show mod folder in just in the next tutorial. But for the time being, we want to proceed to the fabric mod JSON file. So double click on this and you can see we are already using our ID. So this is our mod ID. We also have a version associated with it. This version is defined in the Gradle properties file, which we will take a look at in a moment. The name over here is tutorial mod. Then we have a description. This can be anything that we want. This is a tutorial mod made by Kalpenjo. So for example, something like this. Authors of this case is Kalpenjo. The content here, of course, would be different, right? It's not Fabric MC Net and GitHub. This would be something different, but I'm going to change this later down the line. This isn't too important to change as of right now. But what is important to change is the license because this tutorial series is licensed under the MIT license, basically meaning you can take all of this code as long as you give proper credit. And then we get to the entry points, which are very important. So once again, you can see that the entry points right now are example mod and example mod data generator. These refer to the classes that we had just before, but we renamed them. So now we need to change this here as well. That's quite important. So this needs to be tutorial mod. Please note the casing has to be correct. So this name right here has to match exactly the name of our class right here. Similar to this one, so this needs to be tutorial mod data generator. Awesome. Then we can see here we're referring to a mix and JSON file. This already exists and we don't need to change anything. And then down here, we're also depending on a few things. Number one, this particular mod says, hey, we need to have a fabric loader that's, that's at least version 0.14.21. 
we also at least want some kind of 120 version. We want a Java 17 or up and we do need the Fabric API. That's the general idea right here. And we might see this depends in the future as well. One thing we wanted to add right here in the entry points is quite important. We want to basically select the main over here. We can duplicate this and change the main to client. You can see it actually already suggests this to us. And we're going to change this to tutorial mod client because this is going to be a new class that we're going to add. So we want this to be added right here. And then in the tutorial mod package, we're going to right click new Java class. We're going to call this the tutorial mod client. This will implement the client mod initializer. We're going to hover over this, implement the on initialize client method, and then we're done and we don't need to change anything here. If at any point you run into an error, maybe you've mistyped something or there's maybe something, you know, in a red underline here somewhere, then what you can do is you can always check the source code that I'm writing over here in the description below. There's a GitHub repository with all of the code for you to basically compare to. All right, and the last stop is going to be the gradle.properties file right here. And in here, you can basically define a few things. So these are the fabric properties as well as the dependency. This, this basically just says, hey, which Minecraft version are we using? Which mappings are we using? And which loader version are we using? And then down here, it says, which fabric version are we using? While the mod properties, these are the things that we can change. So for example, maybe I am on 0.1-120.1. So this is my mod version right now. I always want to have a version of the mod and then dash and then I want to end this with a version of Minecraft that this mod is compatible with. That makes it a little bit nicer and user friendly. So these are all of the changes that we need to do. At the top right, you should now find a little a little elephant over here, which is the load gradle changes. If this does not appear, you can open the Gradle tab and just hit the reload all gradle projects button. This will build once again. It should it shouldn't take very long over here, but that should be fine. And then we actually want to open the terminal. And we want to put in dot slash gradle w gen sources written exactly like this. And we want to hit enter. And this is going to download some sources which are going to be quite important for us. This will allow us to go into the source code from vanilla, which is going to be very, very interesting indeed. So once again, just let this run through. It might take a minute or two, but once this has run through, we're going to continue from there. All right, so you can see it built successful in 51 seconds. And what we want to do now is we want to go into the example mod mixing over here, and we just want to middle mouse button click on the Minecraft server. This will open the Minecraft server class over here, and you will see this blue line. This means that we're not actually getting the correct source code. And what you can do now after you've done the gen sources is you can click on this choose sources button, and we're going to choose the, the dash sources jar over here. This should be the new one that, that has been created. I mean, hit OK. It's going to reload a few things. On some classes, you might get a red stripe over here, but that's totally fine. Similar to the fact that there might be some errors in this in this class. However, this is much more representative. You will also get some comments on certain methods which are going to be useful down the line. So that's going to be okay. And we can close those classes. And with this, we are actually done. Now we can start Minecraft for the first time. To do this, we want to go to the Grail tab over here, expand tasks, expand fabric. And then in the run client over here, we want to double click on this. And then it's going to start compiling Java and it's going to start Minecraft in just a moment. There you go. Minecraft is already starting. And there we go. Press enter to enable the narrator. All right. We're immediately going to just, just going to decrease the sound a little bit. What you will find is you will get this error right here. The Minecraft client exception status 401. This is an absolutely normal error. You will always get this when you're launching Minecraft in the dev environment here in IntelliJ. So you can ignore this every time you run the client. You will always get this and you can ignore this. All right, so we can now quit out of the game. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to restart IntelliJ once. So you're basically just going to close it and then reopen it. And you might ask yourself, why would we do this? Well, because now we actually also have access to the run configurations from Fabric over here and they are just a little bit better. So you basically always want to use those. So instead of choosing the run client right here, we want to choose the Minecraft client and if we now hit this run button, the same thing was going to start. Basically, Minecraft is going to start in just a moment. However, this also does some additional things. And that's why basically why we want to choose this. So as it's doing th stuff, once again, you will get the failed authentication error right here. However, once again, Minecraft has started absolutely no issues. And every time you want to start, once again, you can just go to the run button over here and click that. And then the Minecraft client is going to start. What I highly recommend you do is you take the project, how it is in this current state, and you actually copy it and make a backup of this. Because in theory, this is the case that every time you want to make a new mod, you would have to go through each of those steps again, which of course can be quite annoying if you have a lot of 
ideas for a lot of mods. And then lastly, this is a part which is optional, but I still highly recommend it, and that is making a GitHub repository. So we're going to upload this particular project to a GitHub repository. This way, we can have a version control system, meaning that if we change something and then maybe the mod breaks, we can then revert to a earlier version. And this also allows us to share our project with other people. For example, you might join the Discord server and you have an issue. And you're going to say, hey, how can I fix this? If you have a GitHub repository and you're going to share that GitHub repository with us, because that's going to allow us to help you way quicker, because having the entire project in front of us is going to make diagnosing any issue way easier. So for this, of course, you need a GitHub account. Now, GitHub is a absolutely reputable site. It is it's used by, I mean, millions of developers, both professional and personal. I highly recommend you just make an account and then we can proceed from there. And what you're going to do is you're going to click the VCS button over here and you're going to click the share project on GitHub button. You can see this is going to be the name of my repository here and I'm going to choose to make this private. If you want to use this GitHub repository for help, for example, on Discord service to share, then you, of course you need to make this non-private, right? You need to make this public. Otherwise, you will have to do this on GitHub and that's just an extra step that you don't need. I'm going to make this private because this is not going to be the final GitHub repository. That's something else entirely, right? And now you can't share this by anything, but what you can do is you can add an account and we're going to log in via GitHub right here. This will open a new window in your browser. And if you're logged into GitHub in that browser, you can just click the authorize in GitHub. And I've been successfully authorized. If I now return to IntelliJ, you can see github.com slash which is exactly the account I want to share this with. I'm going to hit share. You can see a bunch of things turned red. That's totally normal. We're going to hit add. And then at the bottom right corner, once this has been done, successfully shared project on GitHub. If I click on this, you can see github.com slash slash fabric tutorial 120x. Awesome. If I now make any changes, so for example, let's remove the logger over here. The file where I made those changes is going to turn blue. And to make those changes and to upload those changes, I'm going to go to the commit tab on the left here. I'm going to say yes to those changes. This is going to be a very important change. And I'm going to commit this. And there we go. Sometimes you also get the commits that contain warnings. That's totally normal. Microsoft modding in this case is just a complete disaster with the amount of warnings that you're going to get. So it is what it is. And if we were to reload this page over here on GitHub, you're going to see nothing has happened. This is quite curious. Why would this be the case? Well, if you take a look once again on the bottom right corner, we have this green circle over here. That means that we've committed something, but it hasn't been pushed to, to GitHub yet. We basically said, hey, Git, make sure to keep track of these changes, but we actually haven't uploaded those changes. To upload those changes, we're going to go to the push button over here, this little arrow, and we're going to push anyways. And then after this has been done, we're going to see in the bottom right corner again, push one commit to origin master. And if we go back to GitHub over here and reload this, you can see very important change. Awesome. And that's basically it with the setup. Next time we're going to add a custom item in this video right here. Hope to see you there. So yeah.